Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to set up the IDS IP module. This is what it looks like. In the box you will get the module itself, a little booklet, and then the wall plugs to mount the unit. There you can see it's got the hype sign writing here and it says IP Connect. Why it says IP Connect is it has an IP port there that is an RJ45 port. You can get one that is Wi-Fi enabled and the one that I'm demonstrating is the IP hardwired enabled version. All right, immediately you can see that it's got this uh, fly lead here and this is going to be plugging directly into your panel. So you will need access to your panel and you'll also see that this happens to be the same place where the X-Series SMS communicator would be plugged in. So you will have to decide which method you'll be using. Will you be communicate or will your client receive the uh, status updates via the app using the hype ip connect or will they be using the sms module because you are unable to use both so in this case i'm going to now be converting an already a present alarm system that had the sms communicator and i'm now going to change it for the version using the ids app in order to do this little installation you will need to have a cat5 cable cat5 e cable available so here i've already wired a cable to the alarm panel so there's a cable waiting for me on the other side and then obviously in order for this to work you will need a crimper maybe some uh, other general purpose tools and then the RJ45 connector itself like this. You'll make a cable and it will plug into the unit over there and this fly lead will then need to be connected to a router or a switch that has internet capability. So the point of this unit is that you can interface with your alarm or your client can interface with the alarm via the internet. That means that this will only work if there's internet available at that property where you are installing this. And I just want to show you inside, if I open this up, you will see there is a terminal there and that terminal is for power supply. So it says there 12 volts. So you will need just a two core cable just to connect from there 12 volts to your alarm panel um, you could also use comms cable all right now i'm going to the panel side and i'm going to go and connect this up right i'm on the panel side there's the alarm system panel and you can see there is the serial cable which is plugged in and it's currently using an x sms communicator so i'm now going to swap the sms communicator with the ip hype connect so i'm just going to unplug the serial connector here and how i do that is i grab on the plastic i don't pull it on the cables i grab it from the plastic otherwise you'll damage these cables and now the x SMS communicator is disconnected. I'm now going to mount the hype connect. Now you could drill this into the wall, but what I'm going to do is just use panel beating grade double sided tape. It lasts several years. And I'm just going to stick it at the back here, but obviously you can do a more thorough job and drill it into the wall. All right, now the Bottom is where the uh, RJ45 port is and I'm going to glue this Well, I'm going to stick this next to the panel just like this and then it needs to be plugged in but before I plug it in I'm actually going to power it up so I have a uh, fly lead here and it needs 12 volts so there is the common the ground is on the right hand side and the 12 volts is on the left hand side and my experience with uh, IDS is that it's probably best to power it directly from the alarm panel power output itself rather than using an independent supply. Right now I'm going to disconnect the 12 volt and uh, ground of the XSMS communicator. So that will power down now. And I'm going to feed these wires, the new wires, the serial cable, plus the positive and negative of the IP connect. 
All right, so there's positive and negative, and there is positive and negative, and you can see the status coming up there. There's some flashing lights, and I'm sure these light sequences mean something. All right, and now I'm going to plug this in to the panel now. A red at the top and the next step is just to plug in your cat5 network cable that is coming from your router or switch that is providing you with internet access you might need to um, make your own connection here so uh, I do have a video showing how to put the RJ45 onto the cat5 e um, I'm just going to do it very quickly now all right, you'll have put the boot on, and now I'm just gonna get the uh, wiring done here. It is, uh, color code is orange, white, orange. So the first thing you wanna do is just separate all these leads. Okay, so I get them a bit like that, and now I pull them tight in the order. Orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. That is the color coordination for a Cat5e one gigabit cable. All right, I've just cut them and now I put the RJ45 on. I just uh, clamp it here with my finger, bend it backwards, and then you vigorously push it in there. And if you look closely, every single one of those cores is pushed right to the end, making sure there is no bad connection. As you look at the side view, the jacket is pushed right in. Now it is time to crimp it. All right, so now I could plug this in. Let's see if there's a signal. Yes, you can see there's the link light has come on, the status light as well. I've got a green link light at the back. You can't really see. And then the orange activity light. I'm going to close it, but these lights uh, tell you something. If you have a problem and you need to troubleshoot, there's some uh, sequence of light flashes which you would need to look at. I'm going to just close it, but obviously you should only close it once everything is complete. Right, so that's what it looks like once it is closed. Right, I'm just showing you the network side. On the other side of that uh, Cat5e cable, there's the network cable plugging into a switch. Uh, th this uh, site has quite a few network points. Now, maybe on a smaller site, you'll be basically plugging it directly into the back of a router. For example, if it's a small network and there is no additional switch on that network, you would literally find one of the available slots on the uh, client's uh, little router and you'll plug it in right there. You do not have to make any configuration changes on the router. The um, module creates a tunnel right through because basically it is going to the internet and it is looking for some web server probably at IDS's uh, head office or maybe they are renting somebody's server. Right, there is no DDNS setup or port forwarding requirement here. You just plug in and it should work. Right, the next step is what I call just resetting the comms uh, port. So you'll press the four nines to get into the installer location. And then it is 196 star. And all you do, even though it says there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just do it again. Right, now it is time to do the app. Right, to set up the app, you go to your Play Store if you're using Android, and then you look for IDS Alarm app. There we go. And then it comes up Hype Smart Home. Obviously, you could also search for Hype Smart Home. Right, launch the app, and then you'll have to sign up. It'll ask you for a myriad of details. You can see it once first name, last name, mobile number, email address, uh, password, and you confirm your password. All right, so you'll need to have your first name, your last name, your mobile number, your email address, a password of at least six uh, characters, and then you'll sign up. Now, then it'll ask you to add your site. Um, I'll continue. You give your site a name. I'm just going to call this site test. And then it needs the IMEI number, which you will find on the box. So don't discard the box of your um, hype module. So what you can do is you can manually type that IME number or you can just scan it. So what I'll do is I'm going to use the QR scan, allow permission.
and there you can see I've scanned it and then I continue. And now what you need to do is you need to go to your panel um, and then follow that same procedure that I showed you where you go and you press the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and almost reset the comms port. So I'll show you how to do that now. So you'll press the four nines to get into the installer location. And then it is one nine six star. And all you do, even though it says there one, two, three, four, five, six, just do it again. Like that. As soon as you've done that, it then confirms it and it accepts it and it logs you in. Uh, just keep in mind that when I did set this up, this was on the Wi-Fi network. What I mean is my mobile device was on the same network. So I can't confirm if you can do the setup while being uh, uh, via your cellular connection because I was on the same Wi-Fi network. Then obviously once it's set up, it can work over the air. You don't have to be in the same location. All right, so there is my site. I've called the test and there you can see the dashboard. Um, if I click to the side there, you can see that it is disarmed. It's telling me I can scroll. There you can see and there's the arm. Stay arm 1, 2, 3. And I can uh, quite easily just press stay arm 2. And I don't know if you heard that, my alarm just stay armed. And I can disarm it. And then it's disarmed and there you'll see a notification. Right now you can bypass various zones. As you can see I've got a variety of zones there, all 64 zones. And I'll show you as I bypass one by one what happens on the panel. Alright, so I've put the uh, app here. Um, you can see it next to the keypad and I'm going to go through and start bypassing zones. Now look at the keypad there. Can you see zones are being bypassed? A bypass 2, bypass 3. Um, you can actually see them being bypassed. There they are. And uh, you can see it's, I wouldn't call it real time, but it is close enough. And I can put them back to normal zones, no longer bypassed. And you can see on the main panel, no longer bypassed. And I'm, there are all these status updates coming to my phone telling me up uh, bypassed, not bypassed, and so forth. So you can see how that is working. I'm um, just showing you the stay arm. There you go. I'm going to stay arm it. There you can see and then I get the uh, notification saying it is now in the stay arm position. Right, it's got some automation. If you want to set uh, some programmable outputs, you can. You can add a trigger and then this is what you would do if you would want to switch on maybe a... Uh, open a gate or switch on a light while well, those are the programmable outputs on the expander boards and also on the main board I'm not going to show you that now. I'm just showing you that it is on the app Right just to sum up here about the app I'm not sure how many devices or phone mobile devices can simultaneously talk to the app or talk to the um, the module, but I currently have two mobile phones on this uh, uh, on this one site and they are both working fine another thing is the settings you might not want to know every time someone arms or disarms or bypasses something so you could switch that off uh, so there are some of the settings which you could look at and then obviously it's got the notification signs you can adjust the signs and the way it alerts you um, you can also keep it logged in um, you can put the sites in different order so for example here it says test that was my one site, but maybe if you've got other sites, they could be populated and you could choose the order of the sites. Overall, it works pretty well. Um, it does give you the updates and it does give you the historic uh, triggers and uh, information that has happened on your panel. Right. Now, once I've, I've set this up, obviously what is happening is there's an IDS server somewhere on the internet which is um, caching the data and that's kind of the entry and that's kind of the relay point. So it's a little bit of a big brother option here which I don't like, but nevertheless, I guess that's what they had to do to get this working. 
Right, so just uh, wrapping up this uh, video, I just want to show you one or two things that I enjoy about this app. Uh, the first one is changing the zone names. So for example, if you go to your alarm, and then you can see these are all your zones, there's a little pencil button there and you can adjust the zone names directly and that is quite useful because it's quite tricky to do this on the uh, keypad it is quite time consuming so that's really great then i also like the notifications here you can see all the notifications on this panel have been updating my uh, app um, what i'm not happy with is you can see there's one that says comms fail and unfortunately that keeps coming up and yes I'm very aware of the uh, need to reset or to um, clear the contact IDs I did that I still get this comms fail notice and I get it on more than one site so I don't know if this is still a bug which IDS uh, uh, engineers have not solved but I seem to get this comms fail and uh, even when I follow uh, verbatim the instructions from the a call center agent telling me about the contact IDs clearing and also resetting the comms port. All right, what I'm a bit confused about is why these would be emergency. It says zone restore. Um, I'm not sure why zone restore would be under emergency, but what else is nice on this uh, little feature here is if you scroll like that, can you see I just scroll to the side and you can immediately press a panic and then you can also arm all. I like that. Um, personally, I think it would have been better if uh, the panic button was already uh, on the screen. You could just tap the panic, but then I could also imagine it getting pressed uh, inadvertently. So overall, um, I like the fact that you've got a panic on your phone because maybe uh, you don't have to carry a panic button. You can just use your app as a panic, and that is uh, very useful. I really like that. Just having a look at the global settings, I also like the fact that the notification sounds are quite detailed and you can set the type of uh, sound and, uh, and whether it vibrates and the different alerts, whether it's trouble, information and also arm, disarm or bypass. Overall, uh, this app is a major improvement on the SMS communicator and I highly recommend people use this rather than the SMS uh, unit because the SMS unit requires you to memorize or keep with you a um, little spreadsheet of the commands whereas this obviously with a nice GUI is very helpful. Uh, other than that, um, I don't really have any complaints except for the comms fail issue. Every now and then when I do exit the app, it sometimes freezes up which is also a little bit worrying and I have to then just press the all close button to close the app. I'm not sure why sometimes the app does freeze up. All right, so thanks for watching my video and uh, have a good day. Cheers.